Good morning, everyone. This is Patricia Townsend from Washington State University. I'm here to host our webinar this morning, who will be brought to you by Jason Selwitz from Walla Walla Community College. Um, there are instructions on your screen to uh, how you set up the sound with the audio setup wizard. And if you could answer the chat box that is on the right side of the screen. I am going to make Jason a presenter so that he can uh, do the presentation here in a couple minutes. I'm going to give you a brief background on what the AHB project is about and then introduce Jason, turn it over to him. If all goes well, we will jointly uh, listen to and watch a new video during this and then Jason will be available at the end to field questions. The AHB project, it is a research consortium of universities and industry partners from around the Pacific Northwest. We're researching how you would take a poplar tree and grow it more as an agricultural crop, harvest it every two to three years, and then to turn the, the wood from those trees and turn them into useful uh, products, bio-based chemicals, transportation fuels, and so forth. The program is funded by United States Department of Agriculture, specifically the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. NIFA. It is one of seven what are called CAP grants that are located around the United States that are very regional specific programs looking at different feedstocks such as poplar trees, switchgrass, willow are some of the ones that other groups are looking at and how you would turn them into bio-based chemicals, biofuels, and other bioproducts to start what we call the bioeconomy. This project is a five-year research project. We are uh, approaching the end of our sixth year. We are operating currently on a no-cost extension. The lead institution of the project is University of Washington. Uh, so if you're just joining us, please fill out the poll questions on the right side of the screen. Today's webinar is going to be brought to you by Jason Selwitz who is based out of Walla Walla Community College and he's going to talk to us about a program that he has developed there as part of this research project on workforce development and continuing education. So I am going to turn off my microphone now and turn it over to Jason. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into the chat box and Jason will be able to answer them at the end. So thank you very much everyone. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you, Patricia, uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jason Sellitz, and I'm joined here by two of my students who you'll meet uh, later on in the presentation, Luke Crum and Ken Larkins. They're both uh, second year students. You guys want to say hello? Good morning. Good morning. So let's get started. So. Uh, the focus of our project, uh, both research and practice, was to develop a two-year technical education program uh, in what's now become plan operations at the associate degree level. Uh, students from our uh, program uh, can do two tracks now. One is uh, basically get skilled up uh, to make your career change and then go to work. And the other track is to take a college level chemistry, math, uh, and physics classes, and other general education, as well as some of the core courses that we've developed as a part of uh, AHB, uh, and then transfer to a university for more advanced education. So we started the two-year degree program in full in the fall of 2014 with students. And uh, by uh, end of last summer, we had nine graduates of the Applied Associate Degree Program 
uh, graduate to date. Uh, we've had five additional students uh, complete certificates, and I'm happy to report that all these students have been placed in uh, relevant uh, work, uh, and I'll get into that more during the presentation. And one of the students that, uh, the one student that wasn't placed in work, uh, they are just finishing up their engineering technology uh, certificates. They decide to do another year of, of education here, and hopefully they'll be starting work at a local uh, manufacturing employer key technology in a couple of weeks. Uh, we have uh, 11 students that are completing the second year of their program and will be graduating next month, so that's exciting. Trying to help these students finish their projects and uh, line up some relevant work that they've been working hard to gain knowledge and skills for over the last two years. And uh, many of these students uh, completed a summer internship between year one and year two or they opted to complete uh, commercial truck driving training to get their CDL. When we started this program, we had to do some research. And we started in late 2011, uh, early 2012, looking at uh, community and technical colleges uh, specifically for what renewable energy and biofuels programs were existing in the Northwest. And we didn't find uh, many, uh, we didn't find any except uh, one or two had a couple of courses. So we extended our research out uh, throughout uh, the U.S. and Canada. And we looked and found uh, these seven programs that you see on the screen as reference uh, post-secondary STEM workforce education programs. They all have in common, uh, they might have a course in biofuels uh, or uh, a degree or certificate sequence on process technology, but not one of the programs has a full two-year degree program focused on training the workforce for uh, manufacturing, specifically in biofuels and biochemicals. And uh, while the process technology programs are very close aligned, uh, they didn't have a full suite of uh, courses that addressed uh, biofuel and biochemical production. So these were some of our reference programs that we talked with some of the instructors and, and even visited some of the programs at conferences or uh, on site. As an extension of that research then, we uh, had uh, two panels of experts um, from agriculture, biofuels, wastewater, uh, pulp and paper manufacturing um, uh, in 2012. And then in 2013, we had uh, some uh, additional expert panels focused on uh, wastewater treatment and solid waste management. And as a result of these expert panels, where we solicited the, basically the input and got them to answer the question, uh, do you need a specific training program for your industry? And if so, what would it look like? What knowledge, skills, uh, and attributes should we be training people for to for careers in your industry? And what courses should we focus on? And as a result of those three curriculum development processes, we realized that uh, uh, the wisdom of the uh, leadership at Zia Chem and University of Washington was correct, that there wouldn't be enough jobs in biofuels or biochemicals in the Northwest to sustain the program. So we needed to build a program that served multiple industries. And uh, having these experts help confirm that logic and give us some good direction as to what knowledge and skills we need to uh, target and uh, uh, indicate what new courses need to be developed beyond those that existed at Walla Walla Community College where uh, I've been based. And so today, uh, we have a, what's called the Plant Operations Program. It's housed within the Energy Systems Technology Department at Walla Walla Community College. And we uh, train students in skills that uh, are relevant to the industries you see on the screen so they can pursue, pursue jobs, hopefully me leading to a meaningful career in any one of these industries or multiple industries, depending on uh, what their needs and interests are.
And specifically, the objectives that have developed for this program is to provide opportunities for individuals to upgrade their technical knowledge and skills, to help graduates secure employment as quote-unquote facility process operations and maintenance technicians to begin their new career, and to provide rural employers a safe, reliable, effective, and environmentally sound technical workforce. And the folks you see in the bottom are a mix of uh, the students that uh, were some of the first nine graduates and some of the students that will be graduating uh, next month. So by fall 2014, when we started with the first group of students, this is what the course sequence looked like year one the left column, and year two, the column on the right. Uh, if students completed uh, the coursework on year one, they could leave with a, a certificate in plan operations. And we had a, a wind student that did that, as well as an electrical and water student. Um, and then we also had a student uh, that uh, already worked in the wastewater and drinking water industry and completed the certificate. And uh, now they're becoming a level four operator at a drinking water plant in the Tri-Cities. and we're, uh, These guys and I were able to meet up with them actually uh, last week at a uh, regional uh, American Water Works Association conference. So it's, it's exciting to keep in contact with these students and uh, help foster their development. Most of the students, however, have elected to do the full two-year degree. And you can see uh, we get into more fluid dynamics, motor maintenance. Uh, there's a wastewater course and some of the more biofuel, biochemical uh, uh, appropriate courses, biochemical conversion, thermal chemical conversion, and biomass feedstock management. In a nutshell, what we uh, uh, resulted from the research that we did early on is that our sequence is predicated on about 60% of the coursework uh, focused on the electrical uh, maintenance side. So we have a very strong uh, electrical component to our program and the additional courses that we've uh, developed uh, uh, give students a good background in applied science and engineering focused on water, wastewater, uh, biofuels and biochemicals. As uh, so the research for the curriculum development is what I basically just went over in a nutshell. Uh, once uh, we had these graduates complete by August of 2016, we did two things to do some follow-up research. We did a series of interviews with all nine graduates of the program. And this is some of the highlighted quotes. Uh, the program gave the students fundamental knowledge to confidently step into uh, their new career and with knowledge and, and some uh, ability to be independent. So that was uh, of interest. Uh, another point uh, that was common is encapsulated in the second quote where students came into the program and they were facing difficulties in their life. And this program, uh, because of some of the, uh, the coursework and, and training them for multiple industries and some of the uh, support services that we're able to provide. We're able to help them make that transition from military life to civilian life or through divorce to a career as a single parent or a single adult or just transition from one career into another. And so uh, that was uh, interesting to, um, uh, to research and to document. Uh, we had uh, a couple students that had been injured in the workplace and so they weren't able to uh, work with their hands as they had in the past but still were interested in doing uh, manual labor but with a new level of uh, depth to science and engineering that they didn't have before. So we're able to help them make that transition. And then uh, we had uh, a couple students that were working um, uh, truck driving jobs or other jobs that weren't quote unquote highly skilled and were able to get them opportunities to gain the skills and knowledge so that they could move into a new career and quickly uh, take on um, not only more independence but more of a management role as well. So those were some of the findings from our interviews. 
We also did a follow-up study with uh, uh, industry, and by industry I mean uh, managers, engineers, operators, and, and researchers in the, from the multiple industries I mentioned. And we uh, surveyed about 89, we tried to survey about 89 professionals in this space, and uh, in a two-week period I think we got about 55 responses, so a little over a 60%. Uh, response rate, so pretty good. And these were some of the quotes that I thought were interesting, that the interns that industry was seeing came in with much more knowledge of plant operations than other hires they had made. Um, one had, person had commented the range of coursework, not all the courses would be applicable to uh, working at a drinking water plant, their field. But if our goal was to train people for multiple industries, then we should keep what we have. So that, that fits the larger objective. Uh, there's some room for growth. Only 89% said they would recommend a graduate of the program to a colleague. So that while that's modestly good, there's obviously a lot of room for growth in that area. And uh, uh, then we had a, a, a survey respondent say that uh, the program helps set the individuals up, the graduates of the program, not only for operating but also in maintenance and helping them make them better, better troubleshooters. And that a lot of the survey respondents said that, that was a high priority for them is having people that are able to do critical thinking and problem solving to troubleshoot systems. So as a result of this research, uh, we updated the curriculum this past fall. Um, and some of the things are noted on the screen. Uh, we uh, are going to make the intro to refrigeration class uh, not part of the requirements anymore and instead have students able to pick from three or four classes that the industry uh, survey respondents identified were of higher, highest priority. Things like welding or mechanics, blueprint reading, and even pneumatics and hydraulics. Um, we also renamed some of the courses and updated their learning outcomes so that we could continue to make sure that we're uh, having students graduate with the knowledge and skills that industry have as priority and then also build in some more uh, interactive and hands-on uh, projects to the courses as well. So that's how we've been operating um, this, this year. Some of the key components I mentioned, we have a strong electrical uh, maintenance component. So we go everything from theory to how to use a digital multimeter to how to identify different instruments and how they communicate uh, ele electrically uh, with one another. We have uh, several classes on controls, um, a class on motor maintenance. We get into programmable logic controllers. And now we offer it in a class in advanced PLCs as well as advanced instrumentation. And some of the courses that AHB uh, and USDA support help uh, myself and my colleagues develop are the courses on the right. The thermodynamics course, process control instrumentation, water chemistry, fluid dynamics, um, updating the pumps course, um, uh, developing the wastewater course, applied controls and operations that I'll focus on in a minute, and then the advanced instrumentation that I mentioned. And, and all this work that has been done so far that I mentioned, uh, trying to develop a solid program that would meet a suite of industry needs and, and help graduates get jobs in a variety of industries, um, and then collect follow-up uh, data feedback from the students and industry is all part of our commitment to uh, the continual process of improvement. And as a result of this research, what has happened is we've developed a, a roadmap on how to do curriculum development in technical education and uh, improve uh, or revise the curriculum and the coursework. And this didn't exist when we started out doing this research. There wasn't a clear roadmap of how to put a program like this to get together and how to consider input from multiple points, develop an advisory board, but then beyond that, actual have a systematic way of collecting feedback formally and then putting it to use to revise the
the course sequence and update the courses um, and then uh, deliver higher quality content. So that's one of the achievements of this uh, USDA support for this workforce education effort. So this is what the course sequence looks like now. Um, uh, and uh, we'll have, we'll hear from the students uh, after we watch the video here in a couple of minutes. Uh, but one of the things, uh, again, uh, we are really trying to serve multiple industries. One of our graduates uh, just uh, landed a job with Portland General Electric as an equipment operator. Uh, we have students that are working in public works, either, as I said, at drinking water plants. We have uh, three or four now that are working in the wastewater industry as operators and maintenance personnel. Uh, we have uh, active relationship with the local PCA, Wallula Pulp and Paper Mill. And we have several students applying for internships uh, this summer um, and have applied for work there in the past. And so hopefully that will come to fruition. Uh, we have a student that's working as a ammonia refrigeration technician for a food processor uh, in Hermiston, Oregon. And uh, we have local and regional employers all the time that are calling us about internship and job opportunities for the students that they're uh, trying to get matched up with. Uh, we have one student that uh, never realized this career was possible, but the, he's an irrigation service technician for Valmont. And uh, he has his own rig. And any center pivot over here in this region, he's probably had his hands on either installing or uh, troubleshooting at some point over the last year. He really enjoys the job. Uh, we've had uh, certificate and uh, degree students work in the biofuels industry for Pacific Ethanol, Zeachem, uh, REG out in Grace Harbor. And we also have active relationship uh, communication with um, uh, the Pacific Biodiesel Network. The closest facility is uh, the biodiesel facility in the Willamette Valley. So there are time-to-time uh, -time job opportunities there. Uh, students have also expressed interest in renewable energy manufacturing, so we're starting to look into that. There's uh, one manufacturer in Moses Lake here in Washington, and then another outside of Portland uh, in Oregon. And then we have uh, other students that have gotten uh, positions uh, doing fiberglass manufacturing and working in other uh, allied process industries. So one of the classes that we've uh, changed the name of and, and revamped the curriculum is uh, the Applied Controls on Operations. And essentially, this is a uh, senior capstone course, if you will, where we cover all nine topics, but um, not comprehensively for all the students. In other words, the students uh, get to pick one of these projects and focus on with a lot of depth. Uh, so that they can gain uh, more knowledge in, in one area over the uh, length of the quarter, uh, not only from a theoretical or, or book uh, point of view, but also actually uh, setting up, operating, and maintaining equipment, developing a standard operating procedure, developing lesson plans, actually demonstrating the equipment and explaining it to the public and other students and, and their classmates. And so that's uh, worked out uh, uh, fairly well so far. We're, we're about week seven right now that we're wrapping up. And uh, uh, Ken will be able to talk a little bit more about uh, the gasifier project. So would you like to share a little bit about what you worked on this quarter? Sure. Uh, my project this quarter was a uh, gasifier. And uh, probably my one of my favorite classes so far because uh, there's a lot of personal responsibility. Um, when I came into the project, there was uh, you have to locate where all of uh, all the lines and all of the uh, items are that you need to put it together, and then uh, you have to learn about the unit. So I tried to learn a, bit, a little bit of history of uh, gasification. Um, I didn't realize how long gasification has been around. Gasifiers have been around since the mid-1700s, so um, there's a learning process there and then learning about 
the feedstock, the poplar wood chips that we use, and uh, the process with the pyrolysis and creating the syn gas, and, and that whole process is pretty interesting. And then there's a lot of uh, maintenance involved. You had to, I had to do, uh, I had to clean out the hopper and uh, the pyroreactor and the gas filter unit. So there's uh, a lot of work involved, and uh, it's enjoyable. I like, I like the work, so I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Luke, would you like to talk about your anaerobic digester project? <clears throat> yeah, so this quarter, uh, like Ken said, we had to learn about a, uh, a process, and my process was anaerobic digestion. And uh, a lot of the things that we've done this quarter, at least for me, has been troubleshooting because um, there's so many intricacies of, of the trainer that I'm using to control the pH, to control the temperature, um, the feed rate, the mixing rate, and for controlling pH that includes keeping the alkaline chemical, the acid chemical, so the sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid, keeping it refilled enough. Um, and I've run into a few speed bumps through the quarter, but that's what's made it fun. A lot of the challenges is, is what I enjoy, and, and this uh, program throughout the last two years has given me those challenges, and I feel like I've learned more because of that. Okay. Great. Thank you. So there, all the projects that you see listed here uh, are actively being worked on, and uh, one of the things that we've really focused on this year is getting students active with uh, professional organizations, uh, specifically the American Water Works Association, because obviously anywhere there's a human population, there's a drinking water facility or, or a wastewater facility or both. And uh, last year, uh, the American Water Works Association sent seven of us, including Luke and Ken, uh, to the regional conference in Boise, Idaho. And then this year, again, they just sent us last week to the regional conference in Kenwick. Um, and so, uh, would you guys like to uh, just uh, talk about a little bit what you did at the conference last week, and then maybe uh, some things you learned from it? Uh, so the the conference uh, for me is exciting because there's a lot of uh, a lot of networking. There's a lot of professionals in the industry, and you get to meet a wide variety of people from more than one state. So. Um, it crosses the borders and you can see, you get a chance to talk to different people from different areas because um, there's different opportunities based on where you're at in, in the country. Here in the Northwest, we have um, a lot of opportunities and, and water for us, fortunately, is pretty uh, abundant. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities there. And then uh, are you going to disclose the news? <coughs> So, so, so part of the program that they have is a young professionals group, um, which I was elected co-chair to for the next year. So, and what are what are some of the benefits of that for you specifically? For me specifically, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work with uh, more industry professionals and uh, be able to get my name out there a little bit more. And I do a good job. And hopefully, that'll lead to uh, possibly a little more opportunities for me in the future. And they're going to send you to a leadership training. And yeah, I get to attend a leadership conference and the uh, national conference. Okay. So, uh, Luke, if you could, Ken didn't address the poster component, so could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, last year we went to the one in Boise, the conference in Boise, and they had the YP, which is the Young Professionals uh, poster competition, and we were all blown away by how amazing these posters were on different research that students from other colleges had done and so coming back this year we decided that we would enter in some posters into it ourselves and and stand up there just like the other students had done from other colleges stand up there and present um, our different projects for some of us um, and then Jason presented a poster about the entire program and um, uh, Ken, my, myself, and a couple other students poster ended up winning first place in the plant in the operations part of the competition. 
and we actually took first, second, third for the anaerobic digester, gasification, and biodiesel. And second place we took for recycling, composting, and I can't remember the third. Boiler maintenance. And boiler, boiler maintenance. maintenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to, I had a lot of questions thrown my way about my process in particular, but um, getting yeah. to explain it was a, a good experience. And who would come by and ask you these questions? Could you characterize the type of professionals? That um, there was all people from the utility departments. There was people from uh, different plants, like wastewater treatment plants, drinking water treatment plants. Um, and then other students came around, too. I, I spoke with some of the other people that were presenting there as well that came around and asked questions. Yeah. And some of the feedback I got were from actual directors of public works and facility managers that were uh, asking these guys specific questions about their work and, and complimenting the depth that they were able to uh, answer their questions. So job well done, guys. Thank you. So we're real thankful for this partnership with the uh, American Water Works Association and it really helps incentivize what happens both inside the classroom and outside the classroom through the student club. So these are some of the specific uh, uh, organizations that we're working with beyond the American Water Works Association. I mentioned PGE, uh, the uh, utility side, the Army Corps of Engineers and the Bonneville Power Administration. Uh, now that the hiring freeze is up, uh, they're regularly letting us know about testing and job and internship opportunities and coming to campus to provide guest lectures. Uh, PCA, they not only are letting us know about job and internship opportunities, but they're also the ones that provide us uh, eight uh, one-ton truck loads of hybrid poplar chips uh, per year. So up to eight truck loads per year so that we can run not only the gasifier that Ken mentioned earlier, but also our campus composting operations so that we have a good carbon source. Uh, CH2M has been a great uh, ally, uh, serves on our advisory board and letting us know about the job opportunities not only locally, they've hired three or four, maybe five of our students over the years and several more interns, but also regionally. Uh, there's uh, jobs that have opened up in Twin Falls, Idaho and Hood River, Oregon, and they've given our students priority uh, for those positions. Uh, Avista has also been uh, a good ally coming to campus. And then we've got uh, biofuels and the public works sector. Um, and so we're excited to expand and explore those uh, partnerships further. In terms of the professional organization, it's not just AWWA that's been interested in what we're doing. We took uh, 10 or so students to a hiring for hydro event uh, to Portland in, uh, in the winter. Uh, the PNCAA, the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Alliance, has just designated a scholarship for one of our students. So that will be an annual recurring thing, but the first recipient was awarded uh, last week or the week before. Um, and then they are inviting us to uh, give uh, continuing education uh, instruction at their uh, operator training workshops that are held uh, once or twice a year. And then in addition, the American Public Works Association, the Oregon chapter, has designated a scholarship for students in our program that are from Oregon. Uh, there's one recipient every year. <clears throat> We've had 11 students that have passed the operator and training exam, and uh, we have f five or so students that are working in the wastewater industry, and we're developing relationships with the Department of Health so we can start getting students in the drinking water track. Um, this is more about the uh, continuing education credits that students have been able to earn by working with these professional organizations in addition to generating job opportunities. Uh, the Department of Labor and Industries here in uh, the state of Washington uh, will give 1160 work hours for graduates of our program. That's toward the 8,000 they need to become a journeyman electrician. So that's a, a new development that's exciting. Uh, like I said, we now offer the CDL uh, option in lieu of the internship. And uh, Luke was one of the first graduates of, of that training. 
um, and uh, is trying to leverage that for uh, his job prospects. So. And then we've gotten some press in uh, the local paper and the national online biomass conglomerate. And so without further ado, uh, why don't we go ahead and, and use this time to play the video if we could. Advanced Hardwood Biofuels Northwest and Walla Walla Community College are helping train the next generation of bioenergy and public works technicians. I was hired by the project to manage the community and technical college component here. And so I was excited to be part of helping to develop a curriculum from the ground floor and develop industry partnerships for the community college system here in the state of Washington. The plant operations program at Walla Walla Community College is graduating individuals with the technical skills they need to secure jobs and run safe, effective, and environmentally sound facilities. The plant operations program is about opportunity. So for me, it gave me a second chance having not been to school since 1990. I was a housewife that ran my own sewing business out of my home. I decided to join the program because I wanted to do something different and help contribute to our life by making my own income. If you want to help the environment or just make a good living wage, it, it just gives you that opportunity to have the hands-on training and have a good long career until you retire. The plant operations program teaches bioenergy, but is also reaching other industry sectors. Well, when I first came in, I thought it was going to be chiefly at the nexus of agriculture and biofuels. And now what I've realized is that our mandate has to be broader. I'm excited about it because it gives uh, students many more job opportunities, and it brings many more industry partners to the table. I haven't really seen too many programs that give you skills to work in uh, many industries. It could be wastewater, manufacturing, food processing, they all have the same concept of the way they process their materials. The whole degree program, I love the way it was set up and I never got bored. And I really enjoyed everything we did, especially when it came to electrical, a lot of the mechanical stuff we did. Even though I had a lot of experience in it from being a mechanic, I still learned something. A lot of it was hands-on and lab training because I think it helps people learn if you can actually get your hands on it. For electrical, we actually did wiring of little cubicles, like your own little house, and it was all kind of cool where you run the wire through and you're using your own cutters and strippers and putting things on and turning the light on when you're all done. It was, it was really fun. We've had uh, summer internships at different places, so it kind of made me understand the process that I, I was learning in school. It made a big difference in my career choice. In the first three years of the program, more than 20 students will have earned associate degrees or completed certificates. Plant operations graduates now work for a variety of industries. I got offered a job at CH2M working at a wastewater plant. I was offered a refrigeration technician position. That's what I'm currently doing. Working for Valmont Northwest Home Center Pivots, I love it, and I wouldn't change it for the world. We're going to have a real shortage of operators because there's not enough trained operators out there currently. So. Um, the more operators we can get through these programs, then the more we can keep rolling with our infrastructure and, and keep the dams running and power going and biorefineries going. With this smile, I can say yes, it was a, the best decision I could make. It definitely have changed my life. It gave me an opportunity to reinvent myself and find out the things that I could do. I'm happy with the job that I got. I'm happy with the people that I work with. I can only say that I'm eager to take on the next challenges that they throw at me. and go up on the ladder. It's just a process you are taught to do. If you have an operation thinking, you can do anything.
I think we're just uh, waiting for the slides to load back. We can take any questions that folks have. You can uh, type them into the chat box on the left of your screen. While we're waiting, uh, let me ask uh, Luke and Ken a couple more questions. So tell us about some of the industries that are of interest to each of you. What are you trying to, if you had an ideal world, um, well, well, what job would you try to get? Preferably a wastewater operator or a drinking water operator would be my, uh, like my dream job. Um, and you passed the OIT exam, correct? For the wastewater, yeah, I passed the wastewater OIT last year after taking the wastewater treatment course. And the wastewater treatment course in this program is what got me so passionate about um, being a wastewater treatment operator because in that class we got to go and job shadow at the CH2M plant here in Walla Walla and got to actually walk around on the rounds that the operators do and, and basically be there all day for eight hours on an eight hour shift and, and basically do one work day and that is something that you just don't get in, in other programs. You don't get to go to an actual job site and stay with somebody working in the, in the career field you'd like all for a whole day and get to weigh whether or not this is what you want to do. You mostly just get to hear about it or word of mouth and, and that's what really got me passionate about it. And then passing the certification test just kind of set it in stone for me. That was That's where my mind's been ever since is on drinking water treatment operator or wastewater treatment operator. Okay. Well, good luck. We'll, we'll continue to work with you to try to find that. Okay. All right. Ken? Uh, for me, uh, kind of like Luke, I really enjoyed uh, both wastewater and water uh, plants. And then I, uh, I toured the Grand Coulee Dam, and I, uh, I really liked that tour. I really enjoyed uh, touring the facility and learning more about the hydro side of things. And uh, if, if I could, if I had my druthers, I, I would like to work for uh, the Reclamation. Bureau of Reclamation. Bureau of Reclamation, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I guess uh, can you say any final words about how the program has specifically prepared you to gain the knowledge and skills uh, to pursue work in these areas? Um, for me, when I came into the program, my daughter had just been born, and I was learning to be a new dad at a young age and move into a new area at the same time. We had just moved to Dayton, and. Um, it, it taught me not only the technical experience like we've talked so much about, but it also taught me a lot of response, self-responsibility and, and self-motivation. And I think that like those two things in particular speak highly to employers out there because um, I was in an interview just the other week and, and they told me that this job, this bachelor operator job, entails a lot of self-motivation and and self-drive and I think that in this program we're given enough freedom but still have expectations set for us to where if you want to do it you'll do a good job and, and you'll you'll get it done and you'll get the good grade and, and make it through and feel good about yourself and if you choose not to then it kind of goes the other way and I think that's a life lesson to be learned just through the entire program. Okay. Thank you. Uh, me being a uh, a little bit older student coming in, I I had a lot of that drive, and um, I'm a very uh, goal-oriented person. Um, the goal for me to come back to school was to learn a skill set, um, something that I could take with me to other jobs and in my future. Um, everything that I had done up to this point had been more customer service oriented, and um, cashiering and sales and I wanted something um, more skill oriented working with my hands uh, moving forward and that's what this program has given me. Okay. Thanks Ken. Thanks Luke. Thank so, you. So uh, just want to thank, uh, say thanks to uh, all of you that have uh, tuned in uh, this morning and help us spread the word if you uh, 
know of prospective students or uh, families with children or uh, uh, loved ones that are looking to make a career change, you know, help us get the word out. So here's my information, information on the program. And uh, if you have any questions, let's uh, take those at this time. See a question is coming in from Brianna. So if a student's interested in the program but they don't live in Walla Walla uh, and they're able, not able to move here in the short term, they can go to their local community college and in consultation with me, I can help them uh, navigate what courses they could take at their host institution, at their local institution, to get some of their fundamental requirements out of the way. And then some of the classes we offer, uh, we do uh, offer online. Uh, there's about five or six courses that we do that. We have a number of uh, turf students and other students in irrigation and some of the other processing industries that, that take those courses time to time. So we have experience with that. And then the remaining requirements uh, can be completed uh, uh, either by coming here uh, over a quarter, we could work with the students to finish it. So we're willing to work with students from outside the area. And we currently have been offering a short certificate uh, for students at Bellingham Technical College in process technology. So we have some track record doing that, too. See another question is coming in from Kat. Okay, thanks guys. See another question coming in? Okay, good. I'm glad I answered your question. Anything for Luke or Ken? I see people are uh, trying to, okay, here it is. Will the program continue after the funding ends? If so, how are you doing that? Um, yes, the program is continuing. Um, it's not dependent on USDA funding. Uh, I myself am funded uh, largely through state uh, funding right now. And so that'll continue. We have extended the program to our Clarkston campus and started to get integrated in that community. And I'm uh, part of the, uh, I help facilitate the advisory board meetings and coordinate that program. So as long as there's interest from industry for this program and interest for students to get the training, then the program will continue to exist. And that's basically how it works at the community college. So this one's for Luke. Uh, Luke, you mentioned that your eight-hour day at the facility convinced you that you wanted to become an operator. What specifically convinced you, and what do you find most fulfilling? And the same question for Ken at the tour of the dam. OK, so um, I got to be in the lab and do some lab work. And that was kind of what kicked off my day. And getting to start your day coming in, sitting down, having your morning meeting, and then going straight to a lab and looking in a 
high-powered microscope at, at little uh, microorganisms swimming around and, and the different, different kinds. And uh, that was really cool. So it, it started off great. And then um, I got taken down to the, the UV disinfection area. And on that day in particular, they were cleaning the UV lights. And so um, we were using a crane and pulling out the, the cylinders with all the lights in it and, and hosing them off. And um, it was just something about being outside a lot of the day, but also going in to do a little bit of lab. Um, that combination, um, getting to move around, not being stuck in, in one place doing rounds as an operator and, and getting to actually go around the whole plant. Just the combination of all those things was um, really good for me. And then also the idea that uh, as a wastewater treatment operator, you're, you're a big uh, intricate part of uh, public service in general. If you don't do your job properly, then um, like they told me when I came in there, that no one really recognizes the wastewater operators until they have a problem with their, their service, if their septic backs up or something like that. And then they realize how important having wastewater operators really is. And, and it really clicked home with me. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. And so the combination of all those things, um, public service, uh, the, the job itself, getting to do my rounds and get outside and be inside and not be stuck in one place. All those things were what made me passionate about wastewater treatment operator. Okay, thanks, Luke. Ken, what about hydroelectric power? What's motivating about that for you? Uh, for me, one, they're massive. Everything about them are big. It's a large scale. Um, another important factor is uh, environmental stewardship. You know, um, we're trying to find better ways to to power all of our devices. Well, there's there's not a cleaner way to do it than through hydropower. And our infrastructure is, uh, we have a, a lot of people that are going to be leaving the field. And that equipment is also being updated because a lot of it is older equipment. So there's going to be a lot of changing, a lot of changes. And, and I that excites me. I like the fact that being able to be involved in the ground floor of those changes and, and and working in that industry and you get to see something different every day. It's not it's not the same thing every day. And it can be something you're a small cog in a big wheel, but if something goes wrong with that small cog you're having some big problems. So I like I like being a part of a big team and, and accomplishing something. And when you drive to work every day and I work there is pretty impressive for me. Nice, thank you. Any other questions or should we turn it over to Patricia? So thank you, Jason. Thank you, Ken and Luke. I was just typing that this is very inspiring work. I thank you all for taking the time today to share your stories and what you've been working on and the, the program at Walla Walla Community College. We do archive these webinars and we will work to promote this one because I, I think it does provide ideas for similar programs that could be developed in other places in the United States. So thanks again. Uh, have a good day, everyone, and stay in touch.